Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Malone and welcome back to my true crime channel. I just wanted to say hello to all of my new subscribers. I see that there's a lot of new faces around here. So welcome to true crime YouTube. I hope you're buckled down and you have an iced coffee or a snack laying around because today's case is going to be quite the missing person's case and there is a lot of confusing information. So be prepared because this is a case that made my head spin because there was so much information to try to piece together and understand what was going on because there, there's just a lot and you'll you'll realize that once we get into it. And it is the strange disappearance of Maya Maletti. Maletti, Malete, Mayette, I've heard her last name pronounced differently by every single different news station so I'm Probably just going to stick with Maya Maletti or Maya Millette, I've heard as well. Comment down below if you know the correct pronunciation of her name, because I would really like to know. Either way, this is the disappearance of Maya Maletti from her home in Chula Vista, California. Meanwhile, nearly two months have passed since a local mother disappeared from her home in Chula Vista. I've seen this case popping up every now and again all over my feeds, but I haven't really seen a lot of actual true crime YouTubers talking about it. I've just seen a lot of news outlets talking about it. And I think this case is not only super sketchy, but I think you guys will find it very intriguing. So without further ado, let's talk about this case. May Maletti, AKA Maya, we're gonna be calling her Maya because that's what she likes to go by, was born in the Philippines and is named after the Eurasian tree sparrow that is common in those areas. These birds really like to sing and from what, everything that I've seen, Maya also really loved to sing, so it's very fitting, honestly. She has a bunch of YouTube videos of herself singing. So there's not much information that I could see on the backstory of when Maya and her family moved to America or whatnot, but either way, as far as I know, she was born in the Philippines. The story takes place in America. She's been here for a very long time, and so. also I don't really think it's important to the story either way. But at the time of her disappearance, Maya was 39 years old and the mother of three children, and she went missing on January 7th, 2021, so just about two months ago as of posting this video. Her children are four years old, nine years old, and 11 years old. Maya is a defense contractor for Naval Base San Diego, which according to the website is the principal home port for the Pacific Fleet of the Navy, Coast Guard, and military ships. So she had a great job. She's described as her life revolving around her family and her children. She was a very caring mother and she was supportive. She had her kids in karate and piano lessons. She was also very active and clearly involved with her children. And from everything her family and especially her brother-in-law said she was just really fun loving and you could basically stay up all night with her cracking jokes and just having a good time. But from all reports, Maya seems like an amazing person and an amazing mother that would not have left her children. Upon her disappearance, Maya was in a 21 year marriage with a man named Larry. They were also high school sweethearts, so they've known each other pretty much their entire lives. And he's also the father of their three children. So Maya, Larry, and their three children all lived in Chula Vista, California, which is a suburb of San Diego. And that is where this case takes place. So going through all the information on this case. I tried to break it down into a timeline so it made the most sense because everything is kind of all over the place. There's so many different little versions of stories and little facts and details and weird things that I tried to just organize it like day by day kind of thing so that things would make more sense. So we're actually going to start a few days before Maya disappeared on January 3rd. Where Maya was on a family camping trip to the Glamis Dunes, which is a sprawling desert area in California where people like to go off-roading vehicles and camping and just have a lot of fun. It's definitely like a California thing. My best friend lives in California and she does the exact same thing. Her and her family go out to the dunes and they race cars and they just have like a fun weekend trip out of it. So that is basically what Maya and her family were doing and they were doing this to celebrate the new year. So her sister, Mary Chris, and Mary Chris's husband, Richard, claim that during this trip, things were very tense in between Maya and Larry. According to Mary Chris, there were a lot of arguments that happened between them during this camping trip and that they have been having marital problems for the last year. She said how they were trying to work it out, they were going to marriage counseling, and that the family also tried to kind of help them out to work on their relationship, but it had been on and off. And during that trip specifically, they were arguing a lot and things were just kind of very tense and awkward between everyone and them arguing. Either way, this trip would be the last time Mary Chris seen Maya. I also just want to note from everything that I researched, it seems like Maya and Larry pretty much separated at this point and they were living in more so of like a roommate situation. So you have kind of an idea of the dynamic in their relationship going into this. So Thursday the 7th, Maya's family, I'm not quite sure if it's specifically Larry and the children or if it was her extended family. As far as I know, her sister and her brother-in-law obviously didn't see her after the trip on the third, but I did see reported somewhere that the children did report seeing their mother on 
Thursday. Thursday the 7th is the last reported time that anyone claims to have seen her physically. And that was inside their home in Chula Vista at around 5 p.m. And it seems that that weekend they were preparing for a family trip to Big Bear for Maya's eldest daughter's birthday. So it was this big family trip that they were going to be taking there. A lot of things to plan and that seems to be what was happening those few days leading up to this. It's that day at some point that Larry claims that him and Maya had an argument and then Maya stormed out to go blow off steam. Now no one's sure what happened after that. We're gonna jump to Friday the 8th now. So on Friday the 8th at 6 30 a.m. Larry claims to have left his two daughters at home with Maya so that they could do homeschooling. Now I'm not sure if this was like online virtual homeschooling or whatnot but either way he left his two daughters at home with Maya. He told police that he took the family's Lexus and took their four-year-old son to Solana Beach, which is around 40 minutes away from what I've seen on Google Maps from their home at 6.30 in the morning. Family members reported to have tried to contact Larry that day on his cell phone, but were unsuccessful. And there are so many questions with this one. I am so confused about this. So was like this a planned trip to the beach? And why go to a beach that's like 40 minutes away when you're living in San Diego and there's so many other possible beaches to go to? The biggest one for me is why take a four-year-old to the beach for about 10 hours? Because as we're going to learn, Larry claims to not have gotten home till around 5 p.m. that day. Because he doesn't claim to have gone anywhere else. But it's also at 6.30 in the morning with a four-year-old in January. Now I understand this is Southern California, it's pretty warm, but to Southern Californians, cool is like 80 degrees. <laughs> going to the beach at 6.30 in the morning in the beginning of January is not going to be warm. And I'm pretty sure I seen someone Googled like the temperature for that time point. If I can find it, I'll put it on the screen here. It was not warm that morning. So why would you take a four-year-old to a cold beach for 10 hours? beats me. Now all of this is from a phone conversation that he had with ABC 10 News. When he arrived home later that evening around 5 p.m. he didn't see Maya but he claims at one point to be bathing the children, feeding the children, didn't see Maya. He heard her upstairs as far as I know and then when he was upstairs he heard her down in the kitchen rustling around and he assumed she was making dinner. Another thing I'm confused about is I'm not sure if he went to work or she went to work on Friday. And I'm also not sure if he has a job or if they both work from home or if only she works and she works from home or goes to her job. But either way, it seemed that this Friday, neither of them went to work because he went to the beach and he claimed she was at home. So unless she worked from home, I'm not quite sure. But the biggest point is he claims to have never physically seen her on Friday. He only claims to have heard her rustling around the house. This is the day that I'm very interested in in what the children have told the police. Was Maya even actually home? Or did he just leave his two daughters at home by themselves? But he's never said he's seen her. So was Maya actually home? And if she wasn't whom, like, wouldn't the girls have been like, Daddy, where were you? Where's Mommy? We didn't have lunch. Like, we're hungry. Or what did the children say? Or was Maya actually home that day? Because that would really change the whole timeline of things but from what I've seen somewhere that the children said that they claim to have last seen her on Thursday so on Friday were the children home this is what I'm talking about when things are very confusing with this case <laughs> family and friends claim that during those days mentioned above that her cars were still in the driveway she had a Jeep and an SUV as far as I know and apparently a motorcycle but all of her vehicles were in the driveway of their home and every time they would try to contact her all of their calls would go to her voicemail and I seen somewhere according to a Facebook account created for donations to get a private investigator the last text that Maya ever sent out was on some kind of Facebook group chat that she had and it was around 7 42 p.m. Now I'm not sure if that's 7 42 p.m. on Thursday or on Friday and I seen another thing where the family stated that the last message was like at 5 30 or something um, on the their family group message. Now I'm not sure. Again another one of these places where the story is very confusing. Also sometime on the 8th Maya's brother came over and this is another piece that again is confusing. I heard from one source that this story was in like a Filipino news report and so it was in Tagalog and the translation was weird or something to English and they were saying it was like her brother and then they were saying no it was her brother-in-law and then someone was saying it was Larry but from everything I think I gathered I'm pretty sure it was her brother but I it could still be her brother-in-law because her brother-in-law treated her like a sister so I don't know either way some family member ended up going over there on the 8th I usually try to make these videos as like precise as I can and try to just give you like the most accurate information I can try to get 
but with this one it's just so confusing that i'm just i just want to be honest with you and like give you the truth that it is very confusing and the facts are very confusing and the police honestly are holding most things to their chest the information is just very limited and then very like all over the place so brother brother-in-law someone came over to their house in chula vista wanting to see maya and larry ended up telling them that maya was in her room and the door was locked and so this brother went to the door and knocks but there was no answer he didn't hear anyone inside so he kind of just assumed that she was sleeping maybe and he didn't want to like wake her up then because larry did claim that she was inside so why would he kind of question that you know he didn't know anything was up i'm not gonna bother her and he ended up leaving so he also never witnessed or heard maya on the 8th and that is when on the morning of saturday the 9th her parents went over to their home and according to larry once again maya's bedroom door was locked but this time he found a key to open it and he opened the door they went inside and maya wasn't in there maya wasn't inside her vehicles were still in the driveway no one could get a hold of her so why the hell didn't larry report his wife missing right there and then according to that interview that larry gave with abc 10 news he started to make these like excuses to why she might not have been home which in normal circumstances would make sense considering maya's been missing for two months they kind of just seem like a bunch of excuses personally to me i feel like they sound kind of like excuses now maybe to you they don't he started to make these assumptions to where she might be he said that he assumed maybe she had gone on a hike because her jeep was still in the garage and clearly she didn't go to a jeep meetup if her jeep was in the garage and then he said well if she didn't go on a hike maybe she went out with friends a friend picked her up and that maybe she went wine tasting in temecula because she loved to go wine tasting in temecula or another one was that maybe she went to brunch. It's odd, you know? Claimed that it was really normal for her to leave the house, to blow off steam, and not come back. And I just find that super odd. Like, this entire story is confusing. The fact that they had an argument, and then no one physically seen her after that. I don't want to say it, but I mean, like, it's giving me red flags. It's just a little too coincidental to me that there's so many cases where husband and wife, or boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever, have a fight, and then the wife or girlfriend goes missing. But the one that really hits me with is the Alexis Sharkey case that I've done a video on if you haven't seen it I'll link it down below or I'll put a little thing up here you can click on but I definitely recommend watching it after in that case Tom Sharkey also admitted that they had a fight and then she ran off and disappeared it's just a little strange that all these cases have the same narrative it's just a little too convenient to me that it's always the husband and wife argue and then the wife runs off and disappears let me know down below if you think that's strange even if you have a fight with your spouse and you guys are like pretty much separated you have three children together i don't think especially from what everyone has said about maya that she would have just ran off and not communicated to her husband that you know i'm gonna be going out for the night i'll be back tomorrow make sure the kids had dinner make sure they have a bath tonight you wouldn't just disappear and not tell him what's going on especially with three younger children the fact that the husband larry is making this seem so normal that she has been like recently going out so much to drink at night and go off all the time and not coming home is just not sitting right with me that he's kind of pushing this narrative that she was kind of this floozy that like went out and didn't take care of her children properly well don't just go off to blow off steam and then go literally silent on social media and stop answering all of their friends and family if anything you think she would have been blowing up her family's phones from all the evidence it seems like her family knew a lot about the struggles her relationship was having and you think if they had this big blowout fight that she would have messaged her sister or her friends or someone and been like oh yeah we had a fight tonight about blah 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 you think that she would have vented to someone and not just have gone silent okay so it's still saturday january the 9th maya still hasn't shown up all day her family's getting super worried larry is still making these excuses or assumptions to where she might be and now it's starting to get late it's starting to go into the nighttime now larry starts saying well maybe she went out for drinks and i'm assuming during all of this her family's obviously not getting a hold of her they are getting pretty anxious so i'm not sure how you could just assume that she's off frolicking around california especially considering the lockdowns that are happening and like the businesses and stuff that are still closed down and so at this point she is still not reported missing even though he hasn't physically seen her since thursday it's now saturday and the whole reason she's still not being reported missing is because now larry starts saying that recently she's been going out to drink more and staying out till two or three in the morning so let's just wait to like two or three and see if she shows up. And he mentioned this like multiple times that she'd been going out drinking all her recently. So I, it was just weird. And he made this very strange comment that didn't sit right with me where he said she was like 
stepping up her game by staying out longer than usual this time. And again, what's so strange about this is that he keeps saying she's been going out drinking recently, yet I've seen multiple accounts of people saying that all the bars and stuff in that area are closed. So where is she going to drink? The only other place she could really be going to drink was across the border to Mexico. Just so many weird vibes. So at this point, at this time of night, the whole family is trying to convince Larry, like, we need to call the cops. Like, telling him we need to call the police to report her missing, like something's wrong. Larry's telling them, no, no, we shouldn't call the police yet. Let's give her some time. The whole kind of reasoning behind his um, thinking about like this. He stated in a phone interview um, that in the past he had contacted Maya's family when she had stayed out too late and he gotten worried and that it basically pissed Maya off and that she wasn't happy that he had involved her family in it and whatnot. And if that is true, I can understand why he wouldn't want to jump to conclusions and upset her, especially since they had just had this big fight. If I hadn't have physically laid eyes on my husband, for example, since two days ago and I just assumed I had heard them in the house the day before, I would 100% be calling the police. I would have called the police like when they didn't show up on Thursday night, but I mean, I would have like cooled down after the argument or like made sure they were safe somewhere. I wouldn't have just like went to bed and then fucking went out at 6.30 in the morning the next day, but that's just me. Finally at 11.18 p.m. that day, my sister Mary Chris finally contacted the police to report her sister missing. The Chula Vista police told them to contact the hospitals, make sure she wasn't in a hospital somewhere, which they ended up going to do. When they eventually did that and didn't find her, the police finally ended up arriving at the Maletti home just after 1 a.m. So now it is technically January 10th and it's the Sunday morning. Three police officers arrived and they ended up searching around the home. They searched around the outside of the home and they obviously didn't find Maya. Apparently the police ended up searching the home again after that at some point, but he wanted to make it known that he allowed the police to search the home. But if you remember, we're back in the story a little bit. Sunday was supposed to be Maya's daughter's 11th birthday. Not only has Maya been missing for days now, it pretty much seems like, but she also is missing her daughter's birthday, which according to Larry is what finally made him kind of worried that he just thought, okay, she would show up to her daughter's birthday. Now I'm not quite sure if they all ended up going up to Big Bear because Big Bear is quite far. I'm just not sure if they ended up going up there to celebrate their the daughter's birthday or if they ended up staying home because the mother is currently missing and there's this huge police investigation starting. Larry also claims that he called Maya's work and that Maya's boss said that she never checked in for work that day or like clocked yeah. in. I'm not quite sure if she like could clock in off of her laptop if she's working from home or if she just didn't show up physically at work, which no surprise there. Maya's missing. She's not showing up to her daughter's birthday party. I don't think she's gonna be showing up to work. So after all that craziness, as far as we know, the last place Maya was seen was in her home on I'm gonna try to pronounce this, Pusillo Los Gatos, Pusillo Los Gatos, I, I, either way, in Chula Vista, at her home in Chula Vista. Now, despite Larry's timeline about Ma hearing Maya at home on the Friday, Maya's thought to have gone missing on Thursday the 7th, which is the last day that any of her family heard from her. So what do we know considering how tight-lipped the police have been? Larry claims that they accessed the neighbor's cameras to try to figure out when Maya left the house, but says that they can see it, but it's so dark out that they can't really see it. Not quite sure if they really got anything from the cameras or if they're just not saying. But I'd be really interested to know that when Maya was last spotted on the neighbor's cameras. The biggest thing for me is that Maya's friends and family have been extremely involved in the search for her, yet Larry hasn't been at all. Larry has actually just said that he's going to stay home with the kids and that Maya can kind of figure it all out. But from interviews I've seen, the interview room specifically on YouTube, I'll have that link down below too. It's super interesting to watch his videos on this because he does interview um, Mary, Chris, and Richard. They claim that they pretty much have no contact with Larry, that he's not talking to them at all. He's not really helping with the investigation at all. He hasn't called them to ask if they found her. He's not really wondering where his wife is at all, which is some searches they've done. On January 13th and 15th, conducted a search party in the area of Mount St. Miguel Park to look for any clues. And in an interview with Court TV, her brother-in-law Richard said they ended up also going all the way back to Glamis Park and searching the area of Glamis in the Imperial County area, but they didn't end up finding anything. And from what I've seen, they've actually done a bunch of searches in the area of Glamis, which I'm so confused about because Technically, Glamis is the last place that the sister and brother-in-law ended up and like, I guess the majority of the family ended up seeing Maya. She was also at her house on Thursday, so why would she end up all the way back in Glamis? On January 23rd, the police ended up serving a search warrant to search the premises of the Chula Vista home. 
the Millennium Home. Neighbors reported seeing canines as well as a bunch of white vans parked outside. And it is reported that computers were taken from the home as well as the black Lexus SUV. So that means that they ended up impounding the vehicle that Larry claims to have taken to the beach with the four-year-old, which I find very interesting. This is a huge, huge, huge one that everyone's like all up in arms about, but considering all of this very strange information, apparently Larry is not being considered a person of interest or a suspect in the disappearance of Maya at this moment by the police. The police have not announced him as a suspect or anything. Again, this has given me huge Alexis Sharkey vibes. It's the same thing. Even so, Larry um, now isn't cooperating. He was cooperating at the beginning of the investigation. As of right now, he is not cooperating anymore. And the family does not seem impressed with Larry declining to speak to the media anymore or try to help find Maya. Like, even if you were having marital issues, like, he seemed to be, like, blabber mouth at the beginning of this case and now he doesn't want to talk at all so, like you think you'd want to try to find the mother of your children i can kind of understand especially with how tight-lipped the police have been why they aren't declaring him a suspect until they have gathered as much information as they can especially if they want to try to find maya first before they declare him like a person of interest or whatnot again i've seen people declared suspects and persons of interest way earlier on than this but again it's reminding me of the alexis sharkey case they're also not declaring a person of interest. I think they just want to gather as much information as they can first. This is a really random thing I found, but according to something I seen, the family reported that Larry was on Maya's Facebook and started like deleting photos and deleting posts and whatnot on her account and like blocking all of her family and friends on there. I don't think anyone physically seen him do that. I think that's just a speculation. I've seen other people saying, well, maybe if Maya really did run away and doesn't want to talk to anyone that maybe she's doing that. But I, I really don't believe that theory at all. I mean, there are some people out there that do believe that theory, which that is your right. But personally, in my opinion, I, I find it sketchy, honestly. I don't know. It's, someone's deleting things on this face. Okay. And as I mentioned, Larry stopped cooperating with investigators on February 3rd. He reported to the media that he has now attained a lawyer. He's no longer going to cooperate with police. He's not doing interviews. He's not doing anything like that. He's taking the advice from his family and attained a lawyer, which I can't really fault him on that. I think that's definitely a very smart move for him to do considering how much online speculation there's been about his involvement in the case. And I'm sure they're going to announce it eventually. And I think it's just very smart that he attained a lawyer and shut up because he really was blabbering a little too much at the beginning of all of this um if he is guilty and that could backfire on him on february 5th the chula vista police department did a news conference and announced that they were working around the clock to try to find maya they were not going to release any details that could compromise the investigation which is totally understandable even though i know we were all really nosy and we really want to know every little detail let's just hope that they solve this real quick and then we will find out ASAP all the little details but right now it's just very confusing and a lot of people are speculating on it because this case is so confusing because there is so little information kind of out on it. I honestly do have faith though that they have way more information than they are obviously letting up and that like a lot of these questions that we have will be answered. Oh this was a weird one. At the end of February private investigator Bill Garcia jumped on the case and he did this pro bono to find Maya. Now applause to him for doing this pro bono but I find this so strange because if you watched my Orn and Orson case which is a missing persons case on a three and four year old Orn and Orson West. They're these little boys that went missing up near Bakersfield also in California but Bill Garcia was also part of that investigation he was trying to be a pi on that investigation now he's jumped all the way down to san diego and he's trying to be on this big case all these cases are mixing together that i've done it's creepy hopefully he can do something good and figure something out i know there's been a bunch of searches done i'm not going to name all of them because there's just been so many searches done for maya which is amazing but that is pretty much all the information that we know on the case as i mentioned her sister mary chris and her brother-in-law richard have been going on like multiple youtube videos on like news reports everywhere and they're trying to spread the word about maya and they're doing an amazing job it's just incredible that they're spreading the word so much again i haven't really seen many people talking about this even though which is again why i'm doing this i want to try to do cases that are a little less talked about yeah that's all that is really there for the investigation side now before i end this video let's just jump into a few facts that i found odd so there's a strange thing that crime time with mal brought up she's one of the only other youtubers i've seen really talk about this case might be a little out there but it is strange nonetheless um i'm not gonna say this is fact or anything completely do not know who commented this this person could just be making this up but it, it's strange and if it is true it makes a little more sense to things i'm not saying it's fact so don't take this as fact but there is a comment on one of fox 5 san diego's facebook posts i'm gonna put it up on the screen here 
but it is just so weird and it would make so much more sense if this is the timeline that is true. Another thing that I found is that the street that the Malettis live on opens up to a trailhead that Maya likes to go hike on and people were saying early on that maybe she got injured on this hiking trail. And According to people that live in the area that have been on this trail, they said it's mostly not likely that the trail isn't treacherous at all it's very like an easy trail and that the police would have found her very quickly this was a weird one and i'm not gonna explain it to you i'm just gonna basically show it to you because i just want you to literally hear it from larry's mouth but when abc 10 news did that phone interview with larry they asked him how worried he was and if he was sure there was still a chance that she left voluntarily and this was his response how worried are you do you think there's still a chance that she could voluntarily have left and she just needs time how worried are you um, that's what I'm hoping for. And this is like really the, like, whoa, you know, come on, why did you have to do this, the whole thing? What? Whoa, why did she have to do this whole thing? Blaming her for going missing. But then he also admits in another sentence that she would never just leave and not give anyone a heads up. So like, he admitted that, yet here we are. Larry also didn't answer the question on whether Maya had a boyfriend or not, which I just found very weird. He could have just said, no, of course not. She would never, like, that would, that's not true. He literally just skipped right over it. In an interview with Mary, Chris, and Richard, they stated that there was tons of red flags, but that they couldn't talk about them because it is under investigation. Personally, I think it was a red flag that she needed to lock her bedroom, but then at the same time, I've seen people say that maybe she was like trying to keep the kids out so they didn't get into her work if she worked from home, which is understandable. I also don't understand why Larry decided to leave his daughters at home without confirming that the mother was home. Now, given this was like 6.30 in the morning, he admitted to leaving at, so, I don't know if you want to go wake everyone up at 6.30 or like go into their room if you're like living like roommates, you don't want to barge in on the person. He just assumed she was home. Yeah, at the same time, in a CBS 8 interview, it stated that the children last reported seeing their mother the night of the argument that they had. So if the children last seen her on the Thursday, on the Friday, he just left the girls home. I don't know. I don't know if this is just a messed up on the timeline. News article is just pulling things out their ass. I haven't really seen anything else state that the police released when the children last seen their mother. I don't know, but it is in an article. I'll have it linked down below. It's strange. I would also just like to know where her phone is and where it last pinged. I would also like to know where Larry's phone pinged that day he said he went to the beach because I really don't believe he took a four-year-old to the beach for 10 hours. I also want to know what the argument was about. It's also known now that Maya had an appointment with a divorce lawyer on the Tuesday following but obviously she went missing so that never happened does that have anything to do with it either way this case is extremely sad um it's literally brought so many people together and everyone wants to find Maya. as always please leave your opinion down below or if you have any other information that i left out on this case i would love to hear it and with that maya is 39 years old she is 5'2 around 105 pounds she has brown hair brown eyes and i've seen that she also has freckles oh yeah and she also has a wrist tattoo so if you see maya anywhere or if you have any information please i'll leave a link down below contact the appropriate authorities we all want to see maya come home let's just all hope and cross our fingers that this doesn't have to be another case that ends tragically and with that i hope i didn't confuse you too much because my brain is still confused by this case. If you are still wanting to watch some other true crime videos, I definitely recommend going and checking out my other videos. I have some other interesting cases that aren't as big and not as talked about as much, and I think they're extremely interesting and should be. Hit that subscribe button and obviously hit that bell so you're notified when I post a new true crime video. I post them weekly. Sometimes I post two weeks. It just depends. And that is the case of Maya Maletti. Mm -hmm.